And uh, that way we can have uh, it to send out to everybody with regard to anyone who needs to understand and know the nutrition module will be able to watch this video and, and get a full view. All right, so starting out with the program, let me go to a fresh day that I haven't put lots of bananas into yet so that we can start from the consumer view All right, so the, the nutrition module was designed with a numerous nutritionists that have been saying, what would they like to have in the flexibility and the capability of the nutrition module? So a lot of the emphasis in what we built has been built around creating the opportunity that the nutritionists could structure how they want a person to eat and then layering in from the consumer side what a person prefers to eat and having those two things married together. So you have the nutrition menu, which we call food blocks, and the blocks would be breakfast is a block, snack is a block, lunch is a block, snack, and then dinner are also different blocks. You can set the carb, protein, and fat percentage per block, and they can be different from block to block. You can set the percentage of calories that are coming from this person's daily calorie amount. And so you would put breakfast at 24% and snack at 8 and lunch at 26%, et cetera. Obviously wanting to total to be 100 uh, calories or 100% of the total calories for that person's day. So structurally, you can also add in tags which can be tagged like gluten-free, paleo, ketogenic, any other type of tag that you want to tag meals to include, then that would be an option that would bring in those types of specific meals. Some people are even going to the extent where they're tagging meals as meals that they prefer. Um, you have the ability also to create your own unique database um, initially, you have to get with me to say, look, I'm going to create my own database of recipes. We'll create you as what we consider in our system to be a brand so that it would have a Just Got Fit or a uh, I Am Living Fit brand where you can create recipes that would that eventually <coughs> snack needs to be the one that is the first one that is created that way where people will put in snacks of protein powders or bars or whatever else that they might want their people eating as a snack. And then they will also put in other recipes, you know, like carrots and almonds or something like that that they may be putting in as a snack that they prefer their clients to eat. And then what our system allows for is we have a database of 3,555 recipes and, and meals that are in the system now nice. that you can point to your meal plan coming from our database. Don, we also would, have the Don, capability. Would, Don, would that be an easier place to start? In other words, uh, first put in three meal plans for breakfast, lunch, and dinner and see how many calories that amounts to rather than working from calories first or percentages? No, because the percentage of calories is going to vary. So if somebody were to have 1,500 calories in this day versus the 4,800 that this person's consuming, the portion sizes are going to automatically adjust in our system to give the caloric amount, the correct caloric amount for that individual based on the 24% of the total calories coming into breakfast. So if it's 24% of 4,869 calories, it's going to be a completely different measurement and if it's 24% of 1,600 calories for somebody who's a, a, a small, slight female that's trying to lose some body fat. Or a 17-year-old man. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, so all of those yeah. will adjust automatically based on the caloric amount of the individual and the percentage 
that's coming out of that food block. So you don't have to worry about that. You just build it structurally how you want them to eat, and then our system will do the work from there. But getting back to the database uh, that I was speaking about is the more active is an automatic database, but you can say that you want all of the meals from snacks or all the meals from breakfast to come from your database only. So if you wanted to super control what your people are eating for snacks, you could not have it come from our database, have all of those come from your database only, and then you can have them sort of automatically coming in with the protein powders or the bars or the whatever else that you might be promoting as what you want them to eat as snacks. So, so from the consumer side, which is where I'm starting, I want you to understand that each of these blocks are created behind the scenes by the nutritionist, and they're structured with any of the tags, the CPF range, and the percentage of calories that go into each of those meals. There's plenty of restaurant foods, which you can see one coming in here at lunch uh, for Caraba's uh, Italian food. Um, so there's lots of meals that a person can search for in the database, but they're always going to come in matching the overall goals that you have set up structurally behind the scenes, the carb, protein, and fat percentages, and all of those things are going to automatically populate. Now, can somebody go and find a meal that doesn't match the CPF range? Yes, they can. First of all, they can go into detail. They can see all the details of that meal, how many calories that meal is, and, and you know, even down to how to serve it. Uh, you know, how many minutes it's going to take to prepare, what the total calories are, what sauce kind to cook it in. All of that information uh, resides inside of the menu plan for each person's day. And then um, the other thing that you can do is you can modify the meal. So I can remove this meal if I'm going to eat something else. If I'm going to eat something else, it's easiest to replace this meal with another meal that matches that category. So you can see I don't have any favorites saved, so I only have two tabs. So let me go back to my uh, nutrition and save something so you can see how that works. So if I like this breakfast, I try this Panera steel-cut oatmeal, blueberries, and, and, and uh, granola, and I like this, I can just simply check this star and then it saves it as a favorite. And so now when I go to my nutritional preferences, I'm sorry, when I go to my, my modify the meal or remove the meal, I can go to modify, I can go to replace. Now it was my favorite meal. It's working on it, it looks like. It, it will be bringing in an additional tab here uh, for my favorites, and I'm not sure why it's not bringing that in right now. I don't think I have to log out and log back in. Let me verify that. All right, so when I go to my dinners or whatever other meals that I'm wanting to replace, it should be bringing in that as an additional tab called favorite. And I don't know why it didn't save that. I'm going to have to look into that. Um, so once you have it, you, it'll have all your meals that you save as favorites. So if you have three breakfasts and four lunches and eight snacks, it'll have them all listed as a third tab that you can choose. Uh, and then be able to uh, select that tab and uh, bring it in in one click. You can also go into food items and you can type in the word banana or apple or oatmeal or whatever else that you might be replacing that meal with, or you can go to a full meal search. And so I can come in here and I can say, look, I'm going to put in another dinner. And so there is now 116 pages of things that qualify as a potential dinner. And I can go and narrow that search down to Chinese food because I'm craving Chinese, so it's down to 17 
dishes. I can narrow that down to poultry. It's now down to five meals. And I can narrow it down to the preparation time of 30 minutes or less, and it's down to one page. And then I can even go into saying, hey, I want to eat at P.F. Chang's, and I can type in a keyword, and it'll bring in all of those items that uh, I can get at P.F. Chang's. And so all of that, those options will come in as the search mechanisms, and then you simply choose the one that makes sense. One of the changes that we have on our list of items that we want to add to this is that when you do your initial search, we have green dots under all of the different meals of whether they match the CPF, carb cooking, and fat percentages. And so you'll notice that when you come into the meal plans, if you go into the details, it'll have green dots and you can see this meal that I just saved uh, doesn't match under my carbs, my proteins, and my fats, but it is able to match under the, the caloric amount. Um, so this meal doesn't match real well with what my nutritionist wants me to eat. So one of the changes that we're making is it will bring in all of the meals first that match the CPF range of the way that you're wanting your clients to eat, and it'll show up with a green dot in front of that search uh, for that meal. And again, that's on the docket that's not in here right now. Um, but it is something that a number of people have asked for so that if someone is substituting, they're going to get meals that match their CPF range first, and then they can continue to search for anything else that they would want to after that. And I'm going to try that, uh, checking that box again. I have not seen that not work for that before. There it is. I don't know why it didn't work the first time, but you can see now it has three tabs. So I have my favorite meal in there as my uh, item. Seems like an odd breakfast, but okay. <laughs> Somebody selected it that way. Um, but anyway, so all that options are, are there that you can modify and change and make completely unique to the way you want your clients to eat. And I'll show you next in how you create those uh, different types of criteria and how you build a nutrition module. Before I get into the management side, I've talked about how you make it unique to the way the nutritionist or your company wants people to eat. What's just as important is what a person is going to be able to stick with in their meal plan so that each individual person on a member-by-member -member basis has the ability to go into their nutritional preferences and select what types of foods that they prefer to eat, which basically brings in the flavors and the spices of the foods that they prefer. So people don't like Mexican food, they don't check Mexican food and any of the others that might qualify in here. You know, there's very different flavors and spices in Indian and Mexican and Chinese. And if you don't like it, don't check it you won't get any meals coming into your meal plan that match that criteria. Protein is another big choice that people make. If you're a vegetarian, you would check only vegetarian and you would only get vegetarian meals that would be American, Chinese, Italian, and German in this particular case. So if you, uh, as an example, maybe you're not a vegetarian, but you try to shy away from red meat, um, you can select everything but red meat and then, like I said a second ago, get American, Chinese, Italian, and German without consuming red meat. Um, if you ever want to go search for a meal, even though you may not have Chinese or Japanese or anything checked in here, you can decide to search for any meal that you want on the front end. Additionally, we know that people eat very habitually. People eat the same breakfast is the biggest example, where people get five, six, seven different breakfasts sometimes even lower number than that, two or three, and they eat them every day because they're convenient, they know that they're healthy, and your nutritionist will tell you if they're healthy that donut doesn't qualify. <laughs> even bagels are, can be pretty disastrous to a nutrition plan, actually. Um, but uh, again, you can, you can get your favorites, and you can put the, the percentage of meals coming from your favorites list all the way up to 100%. Uh, 
know that if you don't have anything saved as favorite for breakfast and you put it at 100%, it's going to be forced to bring in the second criteria, which is any meal, because it doesn't have any meals as favorites. Um, but, but that is the way that you can narrow it down so when you go into breakfast every day, you don't have to record that you ate a banana and that you had a steel cut oatmeal and blueberries and, and uh, you know, a quarter teaspoon of, of brown sugar or whatever you wanted to put on your oatmeal. So it, it can make it easier for you to stay up with your meal plan is basically what we're trying to accomplish there. Same thing with lunch, dinner, and snack. And then the other thing that comes into play is you have people that are allergic to food. So if I'm allergic to shrimp or I can't eat cheese or I hate the taste of broccoli or lima beans, I can search for those specific items and I can have them so that they never show up in my meal plan. So in searching for shrimp, there's 13 results of meals inside of our system that have shrimp in them. If I want to exclude all of them, I can check the one box or maybe I just want to insert in to exclude certain types of shrimp meals that I don't want coming into my plan. And then I can exclude those meals exactly. from ever showing up in my meal plan. Yes. Yeah. Did somebody have a question? No? Okay, I'll keep going. All right, so we've gone through preferences. We've gone through uh, how you structurally build the meal plans behind the scenes. But I think you can see how when you build it behind the scenes and your clients have the ability to, to put what their preferences are, there's a nice marriage between the cardboard that you want your clients to eat, <laughs> the things that they may not like the taste of, and what they will enjoy eating but still matches your carb proteins and fat percentages. And if you can get people to eat the, the boiled chicken every day with, with broccoli and eat it, you know, three meals a day, uh, yes, they're going to achieve results, but they're not going to stick with the plan very long. So you need to be a realist as much as you are an expert. All right. So any questions on the consumer side? All right. Great. I'm going to go ahead and log in now as a manager and uh, give you a view from a management perspective on how you would uh, structure and build out uh, these meal plans. Maybe, I'm gonna be wrong there. All right. Don't remember all my passwords very well, apparently. All right. I need to go to a different management, apparently. All right, so in the management section, uh, obviously the nutrition is going to be under your fitness tools that has both the workout and the nutrition. When I go into the fitness tools, then I can go into the nutrition manager specifically. Inside the fitness tools, you have the workout manager, nutrition manager, and client manager. And so you have all three of those options to choose from. Today, we're going to cover the nutrition manager. So inside of here, you have meal plans, and you can see that you can create as many meal plans as you would like. And this is a beta site, so there's a lot of what I would consider garbage in here as well. Uh, and repeats, like you can see, there's uh, a couple of repeat plans, Paleo Meal Plan and Paleo 5 AM Resistance Training Copy. One of the things that I have found a couple of people that are doing that is a little bit unique is that they'll create a, a low-carb weight loss plan for evening workout and a low carb weight loss plan for morning workout. And they'll distribute a little bit more carbohydrates so that people can perform their workout activities a little bit more efficiently, either snacks or meals that are more appropriately timed. 
uh, for that particular exerciser. In some cases, they might put a snack before breakfast that would be a before you head to the gym snack type of thing. Um, but inside of the meal plan, you can create, again, the structure, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, you also have the ability to build meals. And if you notice this, it's not as apparent with this because the colors are, are red, all red. But you can see that these first two meals um, are meals that are in the complete fitness database. All of the rest of the meals are what's considered global. And you can notice that by save two as well. So what that means is that inside of these meals, I can't delete or edit this meal um, because it's part of our more active database. I can, however, copy this meal, make edits to this meal and changing whatever I wanted to change that I didn't want the frozen yogurt or I didn't want the cookie or whatever it might be in that uh, meal that wasn't appropriate for whatever the goal is that I'm trying to accomplish. And I can modify that meal and resave it to my company. When I do that, it then moves to the top of the list. And you can see in this particular case, I can delete this meal or I can go in and edit this meal. And so I have the ability to then go into the meal, see the way that all the carb protein and fat percentages work out with regard to the carbs, the proteins, the fats, as well as what the serving size is for all of those things that are be being in this, this menu plan. So I've got the cereal, Kellogg's, low-fat granola. I got one ounce versus four ounces of milk. Seems a little odd that there would be that much milk to the one ounce, but I guess cereal light. Uh, and then the uh, yogurt uh, being added to that um, at the two ounces of serving size. Anything that you change or modify inside of a meal is connected to the ESA nutrient database. So it is going to dynamically adjust the CPF range. So if I come in here and I add in and I change the yogurt to five, which is obviously going to add some protein. You notice it's 16% and 9 grams right now. As soon as I click out of that, it's going to automatically adjust the CPF range for that meal. So you can dynamically build meal plans and meals and recipes and add food items that you want your people to, to receive on a regular basis. And I'm not going to save this since this was a recipe, even though it is on the beta site, probably not something people are using. Um, but again, uh, you create structurally how you want your people to eat, and this is how that populates. So let's start with the food items. If you can't find anything inside of our database, meaning connected to the USD Nutrient Database, if the USD Nutrient Database doesn't have a food item, you can add it. What I see coming into the food items in the, the most common scenario is whatever supplements that you might be using. So if you have a favorite bar, a balance bar, a cliff bar, a mojo bar, uh, you know, whatever bar or, or protein powder that you want your customers to use that may not be in our platform already, you can add to the platform. We don't typically add any type of a supplement to a, our plans at all because we figure that that's something that's going to be a little bit more on your side where you're going to say, I want my people to eat Supplement RX or Dot Fit or ID Life or whatever other brand of supplement that you're wanting to include. Underneath our providers, underneath content, we will find a number of those uh, products Dot fit, supplement arts, and ID life, and metabolic code, which I don't think they have any supplements in yet, but they will, uh, are all listed as providers. We will be listing all of the supplements from those providers in, but if you've checked ID life, you will be getting ID life supplements into your plants. And that's, of course, if you've checked that or not. So if you're adding a food item, you want to add the items as separate pieces of a recipe or a meal. So I'll use the example of a protein powder. 
if I'm adding a protein powder here, I would put in that it's protein powder and the brand is Isogenics or ID Life or whoever the brand might be. I would put in other com common names. So if somebody is out there searching for smoothie or searching for protein drink or searching for meal replacement, those are other common names that people might want to search for that you're going to want to include here uh, so that if someone is searching for them that they can find it. And then you put the food group in here, and I will also mention that the USDA Nutrient Database does not have supplements as an option. So you're going to have to put it into whatever makes the most sense, like a protein drink would be under beverages. Um, it's not critical. Nobody searches by beverages only. Um, but it is something that does tie it to a, a group for the grocery list. So if, if you are wondering why all of this appears this way, it, it corresponds to your grocery list. We will be adding in a supplement option to this database that people could put it in as supplements. Uh, it's not currently in the system yet. This is, this is directly from the USDA Nutrient Database. You put in the measurement of one, and then you can start to type the word like scoop as an example, uh, and it'll bring in, you know, one scoop and what that measurement is in grams. So if it's, you know, two grams per scoop or whatever the gram measurement is, you, you put that information in. Then the obvious, you're putting in the caloric amount for that two grams, the protein, the fat, the carbs, the fiber, sugar, and everything that you see on a typical label, you have the ability to put in here. You can put in other measurements. So if I wanted to put in a subway sub as an example, I can put it in a measurement of six inch sub and a measurement of a 12 inch sub. And that way both measurements are in there that if someone's searching for it, they can find the six inch and the 12 inch sub um, so that they can put it into their, their meal plan with the appropriate amount. So um, any questions on the food items piece. So primarily supplements. We have found like one item that I did uh, go through with a customer the other day is they were looking for, for ground flaxseed. In the USD Nutrient Database, there is flaxseed, but there isn't any that says specifically ground flaxseed. So they ended up having to put in ground flaxseed and put that into the database so that they could put ground flaxseed into some muffins, protein muffins that they were making. So if you can't find anything, add it is basically what I'm telling you. All right, important thing to understand. If you put an item into food items that can qualify as a complete snack, meal, dinner, or lunch, you need to pull that up one at a time into recipes as a, well, I'll use a balance bar just as an example. If I add a balance bar, nobody's going to be able to find the balance bar unless I move it all the way up to the meal level as a snack. And so you're going to go into your recipes and you're going to search for recipe balance bar and you're going to move it to recipes. You're going to go up to meals and you're going to do that same search again under recipes now for searching for balance bar, and you're going to pull it up to the meal level. Once it's up to the meal level, people can find it. But that's a very important thing that you guys remember. Because if you put it in as a recipe and you go search for it, you won't be able to find it. It will not exist unless it's at the meal level. So make sure that you've registered that in your, your thought process that uh, if people are looking for it, it has to be at the meal level. Sorry to over-exaggerate that, but that is a problem that a number of people have called me and said, I know I put it in as a food item, and I know I put it in as a recipe, and I can't find it. That's why. All right. Off of that soapbox. All right. So getting into the meal plan itself, we consider the meal plan the way that you structure the, each one of the food blocks that are inside of your system. Um, and I'm going to actually go in and create a new one. So I'm going to add meal plan. And if you guys have meals that are not showing up where you only have one meal in your meal plan or no meals in your meal plan, then, you know, you, you would want to go ahead and, and uh, build it out 
um, so that what you're looking for matches, but make sure that you save those meal plans to company. I've had a couple of people save them just to locations and clients only. And then when you go into a specific location that you're not currently in right now, building this meal plan, you can't find it. So make sure you save it to company and, and locations. Um, so when you're first coming into a meal plan, you can type in however you want to name it. So you can say, uh, you know, a low carb uh, morning workout. If I could type uh, as the name. And so in this particular case, again, you might slant where you give them a snack before breakfast of eating a bar or a protein shake or whatever else it might be um, before they get to the gym so that they have some energy to perform their workout. And if they're losing weight, you may not want them to have that. <laughs> so it's up to how you want to write that plan, of course. This is another part that some people seem to miss. When you're creating this, we don't have any food blocks in this meal plan at all right now. A lot of people, not a lot, but a few people have had gone right to the add block and they've added the block and made it breakfast and added another block and made it lunch. A much, much easier way is to go, I want there to be five meals and snacks in a day. And, and uh, I know um, that you're on this call, Patrick. We need to just add a, at least a little bit more description to that, uh, where we, we identify that this includes all meals and snacks. How many, what number of meals and snacks that you have in a day? Because people get confused that snacks not really a meal in some people's eyes. Um, so anyway, so if I do it at five meals, uh, and then I hit initialize, it'll build out five food blocks for every one of the seven days uh, in this meal plan. So you can see it's now built in the five food blocks per day for this particular client. Now we do have clients, many of them actually, that have days where they give them higher carbohydrates as an example, where they have a cheat day. And so they may do Saturdays where they give them 60, 20, 20, and the rest of the week they're in low carb um, or, or, or some other variations of that. We also have people that want people to fast on one day of a week where they're not eating a meal or two or no meals. And so we've created the flexibility that you can control what your people eat by the day of the week that you want them to eat. Another good example of that is high school football team that always plays on Friday night. Well, you're going to probably carb load those individuals for lunch and snack on Friday before that game um, so that they have the, the necessary energy and, and food inside of them uh, so that they can perform at their best. So now that I have my food blocks created, I now am going to be determining how do I structurally want my client's preferences to overlay what I'm creating here as a meal plan. And again, I can make my first meal of the day a snack. It doesn't have to be the breakfast, um, but in this particular case, I'm going to build this out. Um, actually, I will do this one as a snack just to be some, see something different here. So I'm going to build the snack out, and I want to do it as a 60-20-20 snack because I want them to be getting enough energy to perform at their, at their best so that they're getting the benefit of their resistance training as well as the diet, which will come in later on the lower carb side. So I might give them a snack at 60-20-20. And then there's two options for the caloric calculation. The most commonly used is the percentage coming from their daily calories. And, and again, we should add a little bit more description here that this is uh, to equal 100% in total for the day uh, because some people have done this. And some people have used this also just as a hint for some of you that that may think that our caloric ranges are coming in too high or too low, you could actually have your totals of calories come in to only add up to 90% of the day. And so you're going to get less calories than what the Harris Benedict formula adds. That's getting into a lot more complication. I would hope that most of you will just do it at 
for each of your days. Um, but if you do want to cheat the system, which I have asked, been asked by a couple of people, well, I think your calories are too high, then put it in so that their total calories coming in for the day total 90% or 95% of whatever their caloric amount is for the day. Does that make sense to everybody? Not that I want you to do that or recommend that, um, but it is an option that you guys do have. All right. So first meal of the day is a snack. I'm going to do it at 60, 20, 20, and I'm going to do it at 8% of the total calories for this person's day. Now, I can add in additional um, food tags, and I'm going to put a really big caution flag on this. Because if you don't have foods in your database that match these tags, somebody's not going to get a snack for this day. So in order to add tags, either on a meal-by-meal -meal basis, which you can see we can enter both here and here, or by an overall food plan, where I could have this as a gluten-free plan, and I can put it up here as uh, gluten-free in the name. So if someone has a gluten-free intolerance or gluten intolerance, they can actually build that. But I'm going to caution you with that big red flag that if you don't have meals that match the various CPF ranges, Chinese and American and Japanese and German and everything else, and they only select that they're interested in eating German food, they're not going to get, be able to get a meal in the meal plan because you don't have one that's gluten-free that matches. So it, it's fine if you put in tags, but make sure you have meals that are going to match the CPF range as well as the general foods that you're wanting this person to consume that might calculate down as low as 8% of their total calories. All right, moving on. So additionally, I'm finding a lot of people are taking advantage of this block, which we just recently added which is the ability to add in instructions. Um, metabolic code as an example. They have the ability to add in instructions where if somebody's eating a lunch or a dinner, they have the instructions that if you're still hungry after you've consumed the portions that we've outlined for you, feel free to eat any additional non-starchy vegetables uh, or proteins that are inside of your meal. So they don't really cater to measuring everything out and eating the exact calories. They're just wanting you to eat quality foods, and they, they're not interested in, in the, the hunger as much as they are eating the quality. So you can put in any kind of instructions like that. Another one that I've seen very commonly, especially under breakfast, um, and then sometimes, again, at dinner, is now is an ideal time to consume a multivitamin and an essential oil if you're uh, partaking in, in those types of supplements. Um, so again, you can put those instructions in for each food block, um, and it could be your snack, your breakfast, your lunch, your dinner, however you want it to label that. All right, so my next food block now would logically be breakfast. And let's just say that I'm going to do this as a low-carb breakfast. Um, and, and you can vary this per day. And I think I'll do this just as an example at a 40, 30, 30. Not exactly low carb, but lower than most breakfast foods that are out there. So I put in here 24% of the calories coming into this day going into breakfast. I wouldn't put in any tags. Oh, and here's a good example of the databases. So this particular person has turned on the ID Life. So they're going to get ID Life database. Uh, they're, they have the more active, and then they also have the metabolic code. So if I wanted my breakfast to only come from the metabolic code database, I would simply mark that one only, and all of the breakfasts for this particular meal plan would be coming from the metabolic code database. Just make sure that you have 40, 30, 30 foods in that database that are going to match any criteria that you may have added with the the, the uh, tags. So I'm going to put in the metabolic code. Don, where, yes, is go the ahead. List, where is the list of those providers? That's under content. And then there's a tab called providers. And I don't want to get out of this 
where I'm at right now in the middle of this, but I'll show you that. Remind me if I don't show you that at the very end of this where to get to that, but it's under content, under providers. All right, so then I put in my breakfast at 24% of my carbs for the day, and, and that builds that in. I will mention the second one, which is your total caloric amount. We do work with a couple of clients that use the HCG. I think it's the abbreviation for the shot or the pills um, that uh, they want to have a maximum calories for the day of 700 or 500 or kind of ridiculous amounts. And they'll, they'll do that for a short period of time and then they'll phase them into a next phase where it goes into a eating more calories and then a next phase. You can do that with our system. I'm really not a big fan of that because if you don't teach people how to eat correctly, as soon as they get off of the HCG, they go back to where they were and probably gain a few more pounds out to do it because they go back to eating the crap that they were eating before. Don, so, again, yes. On uh, the metabolic code, can you define what their recipes are uh, typically in a range of? Aren't they uh, nearly a, a, a paleo? initially or what is their uh, their typical range in terms of, uh, of their uh, most of their stuff comes into the 45 35 or i'm sorry 35 30 35 the very bottom one okay very good thank you not all of it not all of it but most of it does and then they do a lot with their snacks like they have a tag for am snack and pm snack so the foods that come into their they have snacks that are tagged either AM or PM, and the PM snacks have less carbohydrates in them. So they'll be eating something more like almonds and celery or something like that. Um, but again, you can, we built in the flexibility that you can be completely unique to how you want your people to eat. So I've built in a snack. I built in a breakfast, and now I'm going to go in and I'm going to build in um, a additional snack, and I'm going to do this one at a low carb, and I'm going to do this one at 8% again. And so now I've got my snack slot done, and I want that to come from any of the databases as long as it matches the CPF range. Now I'm going to go in and build in my lunch, and I'm going to do this low carb as well, and lunch is going to be 26% of my total calories for the day. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to build in my dinner. And again, I'll do another low carb. And this is 34% of my calories for the day. And I only want this coming from the more active database. And so you can see that I can structurally determine where my foods are coming from, what database they're coming from, what the percentage of calories is coming from for the total day for each of my people individually. I can control the caloric range if I want to. I can add in food blocks so that items are coming in. Another thing that I've seen the food blocks uh, tags for is people will go in and they'll put in that it has to be an ID Life tag. And so they would bring in only ID Life products. But you really don't need to do that because you can just simply have ID Life being the only database that that's coming from which then I could include things like almonds and celery that would be potentially an alternative to eating an ID Life bar. Um, and so it, it's better to build the, your brand for the different snacks and the different things for how you want your people to eat than to use the tags in that particular case. The tags I would recommend utilizing for things like ketogenic, for gluten-free, for uh, lactose intolerant, uh, you know, all of those types of things are what you're going to use it for. You could use a tag for vegan. Um, so if you have somebody that selects a vegetarian recipe, but they wanted to specifically have vegan foods, but they don't have any eggs uh, in their, their meal plan, then you can set that up where all, you'd have a number of meals tagged as vegan. And now, even if they select vegetarian, they can, you could have two vegetarian meal plans. You could have vegetarian and vegetarian in parentheses vegan. And there is a pretty significant difference between those two. 
um, with the different food products like cheese and, and, and eggs and stuff like that, I don't believe are in vegan. Anyone that's out there that's a nutritionist can correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, but uh, um, so, so again, you can set up this meal plan in, in any way that it works. I'm going to remove the gluten-free because I know that there are not meals in there that are gluten-free uh, right now. Um, so hold on one second. I'm gonna, so I'm going to save this to the meal plan. Go ahead with your question. The uh, CPF range characterized by uh, more active and ID life. Is there a one range for both of those? No, the, the more active we went across the board. Right. We do not have as many low carb meals in our database, um, but we're we little by little we're adding those in because uh, it's very easy. And I'm going to show you that next actually how you can modify a meal to match the CPF range that you're looking for. And I'm gonna, actually, that's the next thing that I'm going to go into and, and cover. Um, so right now, I've saved this low-carb, gluten-free uh, meal plan. So now if I go back to my member view, and I understand that I've only done Sunday. I have to do that same process for every other day uh, I, because we want to make sure that, uh, you know, it, it allows people to to have that fasting day or whatever that might be higher carb, lower carb, or whatever. Now, when I go to my nutrition meal, I go to my change meal plan, there's my, my recipes coming in right here. If I select that, it's going to give me all breakfasts except for Sunday. So another thing that you need to watch for is so you can see today's obviously not Sunday, so I'm getting, oh, I did get a, a, a weird lunch in there. Um, but again, if I go to Sunday, then it's going to give me my meal the way that I should be eating them. Any questions on that? All right, so now I'm going to dive into back to the management section, back to fitness tools, back to nutrition manager. Now I'm going to get into how do you modify meals to be unique to you guys. First of all, add in your food items first. When you, if you're going to start building a meal plan, you want to make sure that you build the meal plans in with all your food items that you have. Um, so any of your protein powders or anything else, get those added first. Then you're going to go into recipes. Now, there's a lot of recipes that are in this database. So if I want to search for a recipe for, for salmon, as an example, um, you can see that I can type in the keyword of salmon or chicken or teriyaki or whatever else that I want to type in, and it's now bringing in 23 options for salmon. And this is at the recipe level. Well, this broiled salmon could be included in 20 different recipes that would potentially include broiled salmon. What's important for you guys to understand is that we had four nutritionists for a little over a year building all of these meal plans. Um, they worked about 20 hours a week, and they built all of these because they were going to school at the same time. And so all of these meals that we have in here have things like what saucepan to cook it in, the temperature to set the oven what ingredients that you need. And this one happened to be one that didn't have multiple, but it'll also typically will include different types of spices, different types of, of ingredients that would go into making this particular recipe. And so we've done all the hard work on, on our side. And so what I would recommend that you do, and this one is an example, um, should be also saved at a smaller measurement. And that's one thing that we're going to talk about uh, in the next few minutes here is you want to build your recipes in the smallest logical increment that you can build it. So I would make another version of this. Instead of eight ounces, I would do it at one ounce. So I would do one one-ounce serving of this recipe. The way that our system works is if you have a one-ounce version of this recipe, if a client needs to have 400 calories in this, of this fish, our system will automatically multiply up each time that, by that one ounce to get to the total calories. So this total calories for eight ounces is 288 calories, where if I was to knock that down to one ounce,
Looks like I don't have the choice of doing the one out here for this particular meal. Um, it'll give you the different measurements, so I can change it to three or I can change it to a half of an ounce. And then you can see that uh, um, those caloric changes will change each time. This is half of a fillet, not half of an ounce. Let me get the other three ounces, so it'll be easier for you to see it. So you can see it went from 288 calories to 108 calories dynamically. And so any measurement that you want to put in, um, you could put in. So I would say this recipe in the smaller increment as well, uh, so that you now have that. Uh, recipe at the smaller increments that can go into a meal plan. Right, so let's talk about um, what makes a meal. That's somebody's dog barking. Can you mute yourself, please? Um, I'm not sure who that is. There, I think we got it there. Okay. All right. So um, in, a, in a typical meal, I'll use teriyaki chicken, brown rice, and steamed vegetables as a meal. We consider that three recipes combined together to make a meal, which makes sense for your, your, your salmon. And what we're looking at right now is a recipe, how you make that, what spices that you have in that meal, and everything is built around um, this particular food item. Let me show you another salmon recipe that has some spices in it. Oh, I need to go to recipes, not meals. So if I pick salmon, fresh and, and apple spices, that's obviously going to have some spices in it. So you can see here's the raw apple skins and olive oil and gar raw garlic and the fish. So all of these items make up this recipe. So again, what I was trying to show earlier is we've done the lake work. We've done the hard work of getting all of what saucepan to cook it in, what temperature to set the oven, and all that. Take advantage of all of that work that we've created. If you want to modify any of this, you can certainly do that. So now when I go into my meals, um, and I have these two meals that I've already copied and made some modification to and saved it. So I can come in here and I can type in salmon here, and I can see that there's now 158 salmon recipes. So remember there was, what was there, 16 or something like that of different ways to cook salmon, but now there's 158 meals that include those ways to cook salmon. So you can see that those recipes have been used multiple times in different combinations of rice or mashed potatoes or broccoli or corn on the cob or whatever else might be along with the salmon. All right, so making your job easy. And so you can look at all of these things, like this one as an example is a 40-30-30 recipe. This one is a 60-20-20 recipe. So if I wanted to look at this one and I say, wow, this is a nice recipe, I wish they had that in 40-30-30, you can easily make this a 40-30-30 recipe. So you hit the copy, and so now it's, oh, of course it brings me in a, a recipe that has no, a food item that has no recipes. You go back, meals, all right, so if I go into a recipe that has the CPF range, all right, what's going on there? Two of them that have zero. Okay, so here's a meal that has broiled salmon, has uh, salad with vegetables, and garlic spiral pastas. And this is another good example, too. Um, this is obviously not gluten-free. If you wanted to change this out for a gluten-free pasta and then save it with a gluten-free tag, that's another way to utilize our system to make it easy on yourself, because we already have the saucepan to cook it into the salmon. We already have the salad and the vegetables. So just change out the garlic pasta to be a gluten-free pasta, and then save it with a tag of gluten-free, and in a couple of minutes, you've saved it 
So you now have a gluten-free recipe that matches the close to the 35, 30, or I actually got this one saved, close to the 40, 30, 30 CPF range. So you can see that this one is saved at 40, 30, 30. And if I wanted to make this a 60, 20, 20 recipe, just as an example, I can increase the size of pasta amount to two ounces. And you can see that I'm inching up that carbohydrate to a much higher amount of carbs and proteins in, or carbs in this meal. So if I put three ounces, I'm now at 47. And so you can see that I can manipulate the CPF range by just adjusting what I'm putting in here uh, to get to a CPF range that matches the way I want my people to eat. Typically, if you get that green light, it's going to be plus or minus 5% on either side of your carb plus or minus 5% on either side of your protein, and plus or minus 10%, because if you're building a meal, you can build in good fats that aren't going to hurt your client uh, on, on how you want to build it. So we give a little bit more leeway in the fat, but you can obviously see exactly how much leeway that there is. But to get that, that uh, green dot, for this meal to fall in to match, I would have to just keep um, modifying this until I get it to within 5% of my carbohydrate, protein, and fat percentages to get to the 60, 20, 20. And you can see I'm getting close now. But you can see how you can just go in here and just continue to manipulate this however you need to to get to that 60, 20, 20. This is probably not the best example, but uh, um, it'll, it'll make it work for you to get to into that range and then you would simply save this into the 60 20 20 cpf range and it'll then have a meal for you that would be gluten-free 60 20 20 that matches whatever ethnicity in this particular case they've identified this one as american uh, but you can identify it to however you you need to to structure it any questions on that? Does that make sense to everybody? All right, so one other thing I'll just show you just so that you got a clear picture of it. If I wanted to replace this garlic spirals, I would go to uh, at adding a recipe, and I would turn, uh, I don't know if I even have any in here that uh, would be un under gluten. It even has that, that keyword in any of the USC. Oh, it does. So you can see that I have all types of gluten-free meals that are coming from the USC Nutrient Database. So I could probably type in gluten and pasta and probably find some gluten-free pastas. I might have to do that in reverse. Okay, so here you go. So you can see that I have a gluten-free pasta here where I can now add that recipe. And it's adding that recipe in here. And then I can delete by clicking this X. So let's just say that it's going to probably be similar. And so now, as easy as that, I can add in the gluten-free tag and have a gluten-free. And I would probably want to add that also to the title. Does that make sense, guys? Interesting that there's higher carbohydrate in that pasta than the other one. A lot higher. Must have been some kind of different. All right, so I've got pasta salad. I can go down those low as one out here. There we go. So this one's going to get pretty close. That I might want. I have to reduce the. Or add a little bit more fat to get it to the 60, 20, 20. And again, you can get to, you know, the closest one that, that matches here uh, is what you would want to save this at. So if I save this as 60, 20, 20 gluten-free with a gluten-free tag, I can do that. And that's now going to be available as a recipe. Other thing to watch for, anytime you change anything, in particular when you're building the meal plan, there's a green bar that comes across the top. It starts out black that says saving data, and then it turns to green when it says success. You need to make sure that you wait until it turns to green. If you don't wait until it turns to green, 
and you do something else and hit save again, it has caused it where it creates two breakfasts, two lunches, two snacks, two dinners. And so you end up saving it on top of itself. And before the first one saved it, you're asking it to save it again. And so it, it ends up breaking your plan and you're going to have to delete that plan and rebuild it. So to save yourself the grief, wait until that success bar comes across the top that says that, yes, it's successfully saved. It's very quick when you add your, your Sunday and it gets a little slower when you get finished with Monday and a little slower when you get finished with Tuesday. By the end of the week, it takes probably 20 seconds to save. So make sure you're aware of that and that when you get to the end of the week, because it's saving so much data every time that you're being patient enough to save that data uh, and, and you don't corrupt what you're building. So inside of my nutrition plan now, you can see there's the meal that I just saved uh, as my plan. And when I go to meals, there's my meal that I just saved with my salmon and my, uh, my gluten-free pasta in the close to the 60-20-20 range, and I've saved it under my complete fitness data. So you can see, it's, don't, don't make it hard on yourself where you're putting in all the instructions of what to cook it and everything else. We've already done all that. Make the changes that you want to make it unique to you. Like I've got one client that, that loved our breakfast. She says, well, why would you put bacon in that breakfast? Well, some people really love bacon and it still fits in the CPAF range and it was okay with them. And, and he just said, I've never put bacon in there. So he loved our recipe for the breakfast. I think it was a quiche that he was actually building. And, but he said, I wouldn't put bacon in it. I would put ham. Okay, put ham in it, change it out to ham. And he was happy. He saved the meal in his profile to match the CPF range that he wanted to get it to. And uh, was able to do that in, you know, 30, 40 seconds. All right, so I'm going to stop talking for a minute and see if there's any questions about the nutrition that I've gone through so far. All right, you guys are being way too easy today. So I will re-emphasize you have to build each day. I'll re-emphasize that you need to wait for that green success bar. I'll also mention again that you have to save meals all the way up to the meal level, even if it's just a protein drink. And this is another one that a lot of people build, so I'll, I'll briefly describe this. A lot of people will build the recipe of a protein drink. And so you would build in the two scoops or one scoop of protein. You would add three strawberries to that. You'd add five blueberries to that. You'd add four ounces of skim milk or water or whatever else you wanted to put into it, peanut butter, whatever might be good for that protein shake. But you can create multiple recipes of your vanilla shakes where you have a, a blueberry concoction and a strawberry banana and a chocolate uh, um, peanut butter mix. And so you can create multiple recipes with multiple flavors. Just make sure that after you create the recipe that you move that recipe all the way up to the meal level. That's another common mistake that people have made. All right. So um, to answer Ed's question earlier, how do I turn on the uh, other providers? You go hey, to your content you area. Whoops. So I'll go back. Hold on. Hold on a second. I'll go back. So you, if you wanted to add turn on one of the providers, you go to content. You go to providers and the different supplement people that are already in here, uh, Forever Green, IV Life, Metabolic Code, uh, Supplement RX, and Dot Fit all have supplement lines. And so if you want their products and or articles to come into the database, you simply check the box. If you do not want their products, don't check the box. Right now, I'll add to that, we have this only for articles and videos. We're adding additional check boxes for meals, additional check boxes for uh, workout, and additional check box for nutrition plans. So you will eventually be able to bring in plans from those people. Some of them will be for an extra fee. So we're going to have the capability of super trainer, uh, you know, Julian Michaels or, or whatever her name is, would have the opportunity to put in a workout program 
And if one of our corporations wanted to use Julie and Michael's workout program, they could turn it on and people would be able to go but have to put a credit card in to pay an additional fee to get her program. The obvious thing is there that we would be sharing that revenue with Julie and Michael's or whoever that super trainer might be um, that that corporation wants to, to get it. It will be an option. Uh, that people will be able to pay extra for, but they will not have to pay extra for it. All right. You know, somebody had a question. What was the question? It was uh, me. And uh, the question was is that you had mentioned about the recipes and bringing it up to the meal level and saving it. I don't, unless I missed it, I didn't see you demonstrate how that was done. Okay. So you're going to go into your fitness tool where we were, go into the nutrition manager. I'm going to go into my meal level and I'm going to go to add a meal. So if I'm wanting to bring one up, then simply to add that recipe, I just bring in the recipe of protein, and it will find all the protein shakes that I just did or the ID life or whatever you want to do the keyword for, and it will it'll find all of those at the recipe level, and I simply then add that recipe up to the meal level by hitting add recipe. Once I add the recipe, I put in the name of that meal, that this is my strawberry banana protein shake. I put in the CPF range that applies, and I hit save. And so now all I've done is add a single recipe to become a meal at the meal level. So I'm just literally copying the headline from the meal, from the, from the recipe up to the meal level, and copying the recipe up to the meal level. And then marking it appropriately, that this is a breakfast or a snack or a lunch, and it's, it's you know, a cross ethnicity that it can be considered as any of the above, which you find breakfasts and snacks, getting a lot of people mark them as every category, because it's not really critical that somebody's eating a, a protein bar, so whether they're Mexican or Italian. So you can select a meal, <laughs> more than one meal type. Right. Yeah. I mean, you, it just gives you more flexibility in those meals coming in. So if someone hasn't already selected American as an example, maybe they didn't select American. They only selected Chinese and, and Japanese and Mexican. But uh, it gives you that flexibility to, to build all of that. So this was a very detailed uh, explanation of the the nutrition module we've gone through pretty much every aspect of it uh, i will make sure that i i mark this recording as a very complete nutrition module and i will send it out to everyone on this meeting uh, so if you do ever get a new employee that comes on board uh, or a new trainer that wants to know how to use the nutrition module or a new nutritionist um, this will be a great one to send them because we've gone into quite a bit of detail now, obviously, when we add new features, um, this will, at that point, potentially become obsolete. We'll do another recording and have that recording available. So we're at about an hour and 12 minutes now. Um, so I'm going to close the meeting down. If anyone has any emergency questions that they wanted to ask, feel free to jump those in right now because I've got another couple minutes before I get ready for my next meeting. Any, other, any questions, any emergencies? Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and close the meeting down. Um, I will send this to everybody who's in the meeting so you have a copy of it. Uh, just make sure you label it as complete nutrition explanation um, so that if anyone of your trainers or your group needs to learn it, you can send them here. Um, we will probably end up adding it into our, our videos here, both the workout that I did uh, earlier even though there are some questions and answers asked in between, it's better than not having it. So we'll add both the, the workout video and the nutrition video that we just recorded in both of these spots that you can just send people right to this area.